Hi, I want to explain some concepts around coding in Mangle Interact. I have prepared a presentation and after the presentation I'm showing live how that works. If you take a look at the main screen of Interact, we see this button define code. If we click it, it's opening the code definition set window. We have already defined some codes like aroused, happy, smile and surprise, which all belong to the same class. In this case, we call the class emotion. We also have those checkboxes for each code, meaning Interact will record the start and end for that specific behavior during observation. We can also assign keys on the computer keyboard to those codes, and this makes coding very simple because we just need to push the key on the keyboard to record the specific information. Once we turned on the observation mode, the information from the code definition set window is taken and displayed in the so-called coding panel. In the coding panel, we see what key is assigned to a specific code. We see the codes grouped under their classes, in that case, emotion. Once we collect data and we push one of those keys in the coding panel, then Interact is recording this information, that specific class, in the coding document or Interact document. Now, using different code definition sets for observing different things makes the coding process smooth and easy. In this case, we have a code definition set for emotions, and we have a second code definition set for gestures. This is very handy because maybe in our project there are different people working and some people are specialized on gestures and other people are specialized on emotions. So they just load this specific code definition set and code through the video by collecting that information. Once you collected this information in the Interact document, Interact automatically creates and maintains a so-called code archive. The code archive contains all information that was ever given in any of the Interact documents. More specific, we can define as many code definition sets as we like and we use them for coding in any document in our studies. All the information from all documents is taken and stored in one central code archive. So Interact will automatically create and maintain the code archive with all codes and classes that were ever coded in our data files. That's why we could call it a full coding system. What if I have different studies with different coding systems? So this is pretty simple. Each document has so-called properties. One of the properties is the code archive name, meaning this specific document belongs to the code archive big file demo. And this is where Interact stores all information from that specific document into the code archive big file demo. In general, that means we can have unlimited amount of code definition sets. We can have an unlimited amount of data files for different studies as well. For all the studies, we have separate code archives because Interact is creating them based on the name that is defined in the Interact document. You never have to worry about the creation of the code archive. Interact is so smart that it automatically creates the code archive the first time you create and save a document. But why do I need the code archive? First of all, during some analysis or visualization in Interact, we need to be able to select data that we want to analyze. And this is why we need to have this full tree. As said before, the code archive contains all classes and all codes that were ever given in any of your data files. At some point in time, you don't want to see all those codes and classes. This is why this checkbox is automatically checked by Interact. It says at the current point in time in the program, we just see the codes and the classes that are in this current document that we are working on. Also interesting are those functions to save and load this check information. If we have 
a complex check pattern because we want to do, for example, co-occurrence analysis on uh, different classes and codes, and we have a lot of data files, we do not need to check the same codes over and over again to process all the data files. We can just store and reload this check information. We also need the code archive for colors and order. We define our colors in the code archive that are then used in the visualizations. And so the order of the elements is in the visualization and the output the same as in the code archive. We can change the order simply by dragging and dropping the elements to different positions in the code archive by using the mouse. And then the order will change in the output of our statistics, for example, and in the charts. We can define abbreviations for converting descriptive codes into computable values. We could say certain codes should have a numbers representation. We can also use just a few characters to identify our descriptive codes. If our target program, for example, SPSS or R, needs this short information. This is reflected in the visualization or in the statistical calculations. Intract needs to know that it should use the abbreviations and this can be defined in the general settings on the behavior tab. It might be handy to describe the classes and codes. This is a central place where all the team can have a look at if they are unsure what a specific code means, for example. We could also use the code archive as template for creating new code definition sets. If we have a code definition set and we push the new button, it shows this empty window. Then we open the code archive that allows us to check the codes that we want to turn into usable coding information. And then by clicking the OK button here, we get this new code definition set. We can save it for further use. That's very handy. Now, where are the code archives stored? This is a little tricky, especially on Windows. They're stored in the public documents folder under the mangled Intract data folder. It's the same on the Mac. It's, as I said, hard to find. And that's why you simply need to push the user data button. Now, what to remember? Code definition sets are not your coding system. They're just an aid to assign codes to shortcuts on the keyboard for easy coding. And you can define as many code definition sets as you find helpful for a smooth and easy coding procedure. And the code definition sets are independent of data files. Any coder can use any code definition set for data collection in any data file and on any indirect workplace at any time. There is really no link between the code definition sets and in the interact documents. The code archives will be created and maintained automatically, as said. They are not essential but helpful for a variety of reasons, as already shown. They can also be changed and maintained by the coder at any time. You could, for example, manually add codes, but you can also delete codes and classes if they are no longer of use because you changed, for example, your coding system and you renamed your codes in all your coding documents, for example. Now I'm going to show you live how that works in Interact. I have an Interact started. Let's take a look at the code definition file here, or the code definition set. I would do as follows. For example, I say I want to code emotions. So let me just add some of emotions that I want to use. Happy, sad, arousing, for example. I would add them to a class called emotion, emotion, emotion. That's my coding system. I can also assign keys automatically or by just entering the key I want to use for giving that specific code during coding. I can save that. It's called testi.key. If I create a new document and I take a look at the properties of the document, Interact automatically created a code archive named test because it, it always takes the name of the currently open 
code definition set. If you want to change it, you can just change it to whatever you like. For example, my study, and then when I start coding, I can start coding and interact here. And as you can see, Indirect is adding those events to my document. Let's stop coding, go to analysis. So I have my timeline chart and I could go to the core archive. I used that before that my study. I could go to the core archive and say, for example, my emotion codes like happy and sad, they should be in a different order. For example, sad, sad happy, arousing. I need to redraw it and then I have the sad, happy, rousing. Thanks for watching. I hope this clarified a lot about the code definition sets and the code archive. I hope to see you in any of the other tutorials again. Thank you and goodbye.